about Apache Pulsar in 10 minutes, so we'll see how well this goes. I'm Jawanza. I've been working with uh, distributed data processing for several years, and there's a lot of boring stuff about that. Um, every once in a while, we get something that's kind of exciting, and uh, I feel like this project is, is one of those things. Uh, the, the origins of Pulsar kind of trace back to probably this article that was written in 2013 by Jay Kreps about the log and its importance as kind of a, a foundational piece of uh, distributed computing and then real-time computing as well. And uh, this is kind of one of the, the pieces that led to Kafka, which uh, Pulsar is related to. So with uh, messaging, we have a, a pretty solid analogy for uh, kind of systems that we want to build and a system that works well. Um, I send a lot of text, actually not that many in, in college, I sent a lot more, but um, text messaging kind of has a, ba a base concept. SMSs are pretty straightforward and simple, but with software like, um, like uh, Apple iMessages or WeChat, or s any of these other systems, you can add a lot of functionality on top of it without sort of stripping out the, the base functionality. And I feel like these systems have that, that same kind of um, property. So uh, wh why do we need another messaging system? We have Kafka, we have RabbitMQ, we have ActiveMQ, we have SNS, we have Google PubSub, we have Kinesis. We can go on forever and ever. Why do we need another one? So uh, one reason is because PubSub is now becoming long-term storage. Uh, There's talk earlier about this, and it's true. Uh, you can use your PubSub system as basically a database. And so if you're going to do that, there's some considerations that need to go into the design of that system. Uh, architectures are, are kind of more complex that are being built around these systems, and uh, the needs that, that were designed kind of in the previous iteration of software, uh, these are no longer sort of holding up. And also, uh, asynchronous processing is kind of just more and more popular in terms of trying to handle the workloads that we have. Uh, finally, modularity. So when we're trying to build something new and something different, uh, we can kind of trap ourselves in our earlier thought process. And so if we're kind of starting from scratch, we want to build kind of a, a clean foundation. So from his quick history lesson, uh, Pulsar came out of Yahoo before it was incubated into Apache. It uh, was built because uh, Yahoo had the needs to build kind of a globally distributed pub sub system. And so they designed Pulsar. And then um, two years ago, it was contributed to the Apache Foundation. As far as the architecture goes, uh, this is roughly what Pulsar looks like under the hood. Uh, there's Apache Zookeeper, that's kind of the state coordination of, of Pulsar. Um, and then there's what is called the Pulsar nodes, so that's where all the sort of processing happens in Pulsar. And then Bookkeeper is the storage layer, so it's uh, for the long-term storage of data. So uh, between the three of these, we have a way to distribute the system across um, you know, multiple data centers, we have a way to process the data, and then we have a way to store the data. So those are the three kind of components that enable the rest of the architecture and features that uh, have been built on top of that that I'll talk about. So the first one is quite interesting. Uh, it's called Pulsar Functions. So Pulsar Functions are a, uh, basically a, like Amazon Lambda on top of Pulsar. So Instead of uh, writing kind of a stream processing framework like Spark or Flink or whatever else, Pulsar enables you to write a small Java code that runs on the Pulsar nodes. And then you can do all sorts of things that you would do in a normal stream processing system. So in this example, it's just feeding data in from one topic and then publishing it out to the other three uh, as a kind of a trivial sort of example. And uh, as far as what the code looks like, um, it's just simple Java, which you could take or leave. Uh, I'm a Scala person, but it's, it's OK. Um, so it's very, very straightforward. It's just very, very, very similar to Lambda. So you can write a whole stream processing system with very little uh, code. And you can reuse the same uh, hardware that you're using for Pulsar. Uh, next, uh, schema registry. So 
The schema registry is important because uh, not understanding the data that's coming through your streaming system can cause a lot of problems, um, including just tons of downstream problems. Because as I mentioned earlier, the architectures that are trying to be built on top of the system are more and more complex. And so this requires more care. And so the way that Pulsar schema registry works is there's kind of a separate process that is bolted on, as I mentioned before, modularity that allows you to kind of track the schemas. And then before that data is written permanently to Bookkeeper, uh, that gets checked. And what happens instead of the data being thrown away, if it doesn't uh, you know, meet that schema, it actually just kind of create another permanent storage for that. So if you need to switch over, you'll have all that data. You won't lose any. Uh, another cool thing in, in uh, Pulsar is this tiered storage. So I mentioned before that uh, you know, these systems are more and more like databases. And in Pulsar, what you can do is uh, you can effectively make other storage mechanisms that are cheaper, like S3 or AWS Glacier, the place where data kind of goes to retire. So if you can imagine you have a streaming system and the data that you need, you care about a lot and need to be kind of live and ready for quick access, maybe only a couple days worth. So you can store that on your bookkeeper nodes and then you can then say, okay, everything that's older than that, I want to push to S3. And then anything that's older than months, I want to push to Glacier. So uh, as far as the, the APIs for all of this, it's not transparent to the client. So if you're trying to get data, it won't feel any different if it's stored in Bookkeeper or S3 or uh, Glacier. So it's a, a pretty nice um, invention because as as you get more and more data, uh, trying to store it on your own servers or in the cloud can be expensive, but S3 is relatively cheap and then Glacier is, is definitely cheap. Uh, finally, this is probably my favorite uh, part of Pulsar, it's pretty new, uh, so I'm gonna spend a second talking about it. Uh, so Pulsar SQL is the ability to write SQL over streams, and the, the reason this is cool is not because you can write SQL over streams, because you can do that with Kafka as well, is the way that it was actually implemented. So this is not a, an original feature uh, of Pulsar, but what it is is because Bookkeeper is a kind of a separate component in the architecture, and Bookkeeper has kind of a, a clear API for accessing data, uh, what, what the the developers of Pulsar did was use a different SQL engine to point at that storage, and then they had access to kind of all, all the data that's there. So in this case, if you have a streaming data coming in from like say your connected home, you can do a SQL query over that, and then you can kind of stream that in, in real time and do all sorts of kind of actions that you would um, writing SQL. Um, or if you needed one to mix and match it with SQL and um, Pulsar functions, you could do that as well. So it's pretty pretty neat. Uh, I, I've been actually using this in my connected home. So I have, I'm kind of uh, crazy about my connected home. I've, I've been building a, a system that is, is smarter than what I can buy off the shelf. So I'm, tr I'm collecting all the telemetry data from like my thermostat, my security system, my TV, my Amazon Echoes, et cetera, et cetera, and then feeding them all into the streaming platform and then trying to diff things that are happening. Uh, but I, I don't recommend it. I've had a lot of arguments uh, with, with my wife because what happens sometimes is like, if you get one rule wrong and then it's like four o'clock in the morning and the alarms go off, it's a bad time. So I, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but um, it's, it's fun nonetheless. So um, you can try Pulsar. It's uh, one of the things that I really like about it uh, and kind of relative to Kafka is that it was made to run kind of in this quote unquote cloud native way. So you put, spinning it up on Docker is very simple. And so you can go there and thank you. That's all I have.